Good afternoon. I'm Desiree Moses, live from In Your Ear Studios in Richmond. We're thrilled to be joined by Sean Rao. Everybody give Sean a hand. <laughs> Sean's performing tonight at the Broadberry in Richmond. Doors are at 7. The show's at 8. We're going to talk all about the new record, The Darkness Dressed in Colored Lights. But first, let's hear something from it. Sean, what would you like to start sure. off with? Um, let's see. Uh, I'd like to start off with a song called I Won't Run. All right, Sean Rao live on WNRN. I could get used to Texas, get a job. Go work for your dad I know he's not a drunk He just makes the wine look bad You hit my solar plexus Swear on my guitar On my 135 You can hang me by the strings But I'm never gonna leave your side Well, don't you go Thinking that I was ever lying I might be a fool, but I ain't dumb Do you remember when your old would left you crying? I said I won't break your heart and I won't run only for mothers but I age better than wood and I got the right hands baby they work so good I know that man left you broken and the scar he put on your lip is staring back at you and if you ever need to jump his ship well don't you go Thinking that I was ever lying I said I might be a fool But I ain't dumb Do you remember When your old would left you crying I said I won't break your heart Sean Rao live on WNRN, I Won't Run, off the new disc, The Darkness Dressed in Colored Lights. Sean, obviously drawing on the great country musical lineage of sure. songwriters like Chris Christopherson or Waylon Jennings on that particular track. But I am someone who likes to have the tangible copy of albums still, even in the digital era. Yeah. And on the back of this disc, you have a handwritten note written in your own handwriting um, talking about how the inspiration for this record sort of came from when you were listening to an Anna Tibble record and you thought, hey, I really wanted to work with that band. In the past, you've done a lot of the external sort of instrumental work on your own. So can you talk about linking up with the band for this record and what those recording sessions were like? Sure. Um, 
Yeah, so I heard Anna's record first, and uh, the musicians and the quality of you know what they were doing on her record really struck me as like, I want to just you transport all of them, every one of them who played on that record to to uh, collaborate with me. So it was very sort of uh, unrealistic in a way because I had never met them before, you know, so wasn't familiar with them at all other than just this one record. But on a whim, I was like, ah, yeah, let's get together and um, contacted them and uh, ended up going to Wisconsin for 10 days doing this record. So it was really kind of a blind experience going into it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, another experience that you cited as being an inspiration for some of the sort of ideas behind the songs on this record was a weekend retreat that you spent, and it was an ayahuasca retreat, which is something that I've never yeah. experienced, and I'm very interested in that. Can you speak a little bit about, if you're comfortable talking about, oh, you sure, know, what yeah. you sort of took away from that weekend and, and what lessons you learned and applied to the songs when you were writing them on this record? Well... Um, I don't know what this got might have gotten miscommunicated uh, somehow, but but this was before uh, the the record was completely done before I took the trip. Oh, and yeah, I can still tell you so about the trip. <laughs> I would love to hear the trip. So then, did you see the record in a different way after the trip? Well, I see everything Let's in a before. different way. Uh, yeah, it's uh, I'm totally a, a proponent of um, psychedelics for the right uses and. Uh, uh, yeah, it was, it was an amazing experience. You know, that kind of a thing, I think the key to having a good experience is having the right kind of a guide, uh, leading a, a group, you know, you don't just want to go off on your own into the woods. Right. And, uh, it was a funny moment though, uh, when, uh, uh, we, we were renting an Airbnb actually, I, I wasn't, but the, the, the guy who was putting on, the, uh, who was in charge of the group, who was leading the ceremony. It was two days, and so it was rented an, an Airbnb to do this experience. So I just think about the couple who owned it, not having any idea that it was going to be 10 people in there doing this thing. You know, we got in there and we're setting up for getting all of our, we were sort of around in a circle on the floor, sitting on the floor. And the first thing we did, and we get in there was the, the uh, I don't know what to call him, a group leader. Or, I don't know what this is, it was shaman, but that sounds kind of cheesy. But he said, okay, the first thing we got to do is get rid of everything in here. Nothing, no <laughs> furniture, no pictures on the walls. It's like pictures on the walls. He's like, yeah, that's going to be a problem. Trust me. <laughs> Did you have to remember what where about everything this, went? What about when you put this it back? Lego thing on the table? It's like, <laughs> yes, definitely get that out of here. And then I understood why um, afterwards, but yeah. Well, that sounds kind of ominous. Yeah, it's a little <laughs> ominous, but yeah, it's it's both to really sell it here. Uh, I will say it's both terrifying and also one of the best things you could ever do in your life. You know, exciting and uh, and it's not just a one-off thing. It's not like you go there and you're you know you're done now. You know. I don't know when I would do it again, if I would do it again, but the idea is just, it's just a kind of a doorway. It opens up your mind a little bit. Absolutely. Sean yeah. Rao live on WNRN. The new album, The Darkness Dressed and Colored Lights. All right, the ayahuasca trip yeah. after this record was written, but let's hear another song from the record that sure. maybe you view okay. differently afterwards. All right. Uh, yeah, let's see. Let's do uh, this song called Squid Tattoo. <laughs> Too late in this dive bar I dipped the wrong song in the alcohol Now I love you But I can't believe you're from Ohio I love your squid tattoo I love the way you live I love your black lipstick that you're speaking with Yeah, you strike me as just the right kind of crazy And with this cold dark beer in my hand tonight I'm gonna spin this room, I'm gonna change my life I'm just waiting for you to raise one of your eyebrows If you 
could see just who I was A second before I fell hard into your doorway and I don't want to kill your buzz But baby, I was losing so damn hard Going the wrong way Now there's something about your way I could understand Oh, something about your way, baby Something about your way Let's go to North Carolina, get a cabin there Sleep in the woods at night by the shade of your hair I can only see the future in this moment Maybe go to live with the urban class My big brown stone We could stain the glass We can live off on my music and your paintings If you could see just who I was A second before I fell hard into your doorway So damn hard going the wrong way. Oh, 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 baby, now there's something about your way I can understand. Oh, something about your way, baby, something about your way. Something about, something about your way. Sean Rao live on WNRN, Squid Tattoo is off the new album, The Darkness Dressed in Colored Lights. Sean Rao performing tonight at the Broadberry in Richmond. Doors at 7, the show's at 8. Sean, that's a song that we've been loving on WNRN. The studio recording of that has this awesome horn section to yeah. it. And sonically, I think it stands out from the other tracks on the record. So can you talk a little bit about how this one came together? Yeah, you know what's kind of funny about this song is that it almost didn't make it on the album. It wasn't because uh, of anything, you know, um, artistically about it. It was because there was unfortunately a really, the, the bass that was recorded was very noisy and we didn't realize it at the time and it was not forgivable. Uh, so we actually had to re-record a bass track to that song was not the original bass on it and uh we changed some of the uh percussion choices in it and so it turned out to be a, a bit different than we actually first said about doing it but but i'm glad it's on there now i appreciate it people seem to dig it yeah so are we were digging it at wnrn um i'm going back to my tangible copy of your record here for everybody in radio land who can't see the cover can you describe the cover and, and tell us where it came from? Yeah, so that was a, uh, an oil painting by a fan on Instagram uh, who said, hey, man, you know, I'd really love to uh, create an original work for your next record. And I, I saw his work, so um, I was like, yeah, okay, I'm into it. So it really sticks out to me. Yeah. It's, there, there's fire, there's a mountain range. It's, it's very beautiful. It's very striking. Yeah. Uh, but this isn't sort of your first foray into kind of crowdsourcing. One thing that you've been doing for a long time in your career is performing house shows. That's right. Um, you know, and that's sort of been a tradition that you've done. And now with the pandemic, you've pivoted to Zoom a little bit. Um, but I'm really curious about this because it has to lead to some really interesting, fun experiences. What would you say maybe your favorite state to do a house show is in? Or what are what are some highlights or maybe... Something that sticked out in a negative way, like, a I don't know, an aggressive dog or a weird pet or something. <laughs> That's an easy one. Uh, yeah. Uh, I've done a lot now, I mean, because I started in 2014, I think. So over the course of those years, it's been like, I don't know, too much to count. But uh, although I've had uh, 
a couple shows in Canada. Uh, they've mostly been in the States. I got a lot of requests to do them overseas, but they've mostly been in the States. And uh, there was one show where the owners had a cat and they told me that. I thought they were kidding. I mean, it sounds crazy, but they said the cat had an extra hole in its body. Did they yeah. specify where? <laughs> I can't remember, but I saw it, and it was weird because it was like his like kidney or something would pop out of the hole or just a little bit, and then go back in. Was was he, he roaming in and out during the set? <laughs> yeah, he was. Yeah, it was the weirdest thing. I was like, I've never seen anything like that. Yeah, wow, that's cool. It's the benefit of doing a house I mean, show, it's right? Not cool, but it is fascinating. <laughs> yeah. Well. I don't know if you'll see anything like that tonight. Sean Rao's going to be at the Broadberry in Richmond. Not a house show yeah. quite yet. The doors are at 7. The show is at 8. Sean, thank you so much for being here. What other song would you like to play for us? For us um, I'd like to do a cover song, if that's cool. That'd be great. Yeah, okay. All right, this is a song by Dolly Parton. This is called Jolene. <laughs>
very much. Thank you.